Hi, this is Kelly Alvarado. The following is PowerPoint presentation on the overview of general systems theory, also known as GST. My goal is to help you understand the conceptual theory, the author, and his major contributions and the application of that theory in today's world within higher education. Let's review the outline for today's presentation. We will go over who Ludwig van Bertlenaffy is. We'll do an overview of systems theory, which will include a review of open and closed systems, feedback loops, interdependence and relationships, dynamic equilibrium, and homeostasis. We'll look at the criticisms and shortcomings of GST, and finally, review current applications in higher education. This quote will help frame the purpose of general systems theory. All things by immortal power, near or far, hiddenly to each other inked are, that thou canst not stir a flower without troubling a star. The quote talks about the interrelatedness of nature and our universe, which is a key conceptual theory of open systems theory. Ludwig van Bertlenaffy was born September 19, 1901 in Austria-Hungary. He died June 12, 1972 in Buffalo, New York. His profession was as a biologist, and he truly thought that science and philosophy was about synthesis. In organizations and organizing, Rationale, Natural, and Open Systems Perspective by Scott and Davis, Bert Lantanafi was in concerned about the growing compartmentalization of science. He believed in a truly holistic view of the world and an interdisciplinary thought of science. Now let's begin the general systems theory overview. The main piece is that systems are open systems. They are influenced by the environment and contain raw materials, people, information, resources of different types. Those inputs are then transformed through the building process to create outputs, which are products and services. Throughout this entire time, there are subsystems, which you can think of as departments, programs, divisions within higher education, who are constantly providing feedback to one another throughout the transformation process. That allows for an open system to be continually extracting from its external environment and its internal environment to make sure that the outputs, products and services are what the organization is looking to do. A great example and a way that you can look at this is making and printing photos. You have your digital camera, which is the input, taking the picture. Your transformation process is your computer. You're going ahead and editing the photos, making sure everybody looks wonderful and has their best smile on. And finally, the output is the printer, where those photos are being printed. The difference between an open system and a closed system is that a closed system is self-perpetuating and receives no outside energy or resources. Closed systems do not take into account the environmental factors on an organization, and it is overly focused on internal functions and behaviors only. There is no constant use of feedback to be able to ensure that the system is working the most efficiently. So one way that you can think of a closed system is a workstation running proprietary software, software or a watch 
A watch has the role of making sure time is showing. There are many internal little pieces working together to make sure that the time is correct. But the environment and other factors do not make any changes to how your watch actually works. Another cornerstone of general systems theory are feedback loops. As you saw in the open systems theory, feedback is important in ensuring that processes are examined and changed to be able to produce the most efficient product. The two different types of feedback that can be received are negative feedback, which provides information on what is not going well in the transformation of inputs and outputs to provide corrective action. It is described as a self-correcting control system that is sensitive to selected factors in the environment. So an example of that within higher education can be making changes to a policy based on alumni feedback. Positive feedback provides information on what is going well in the transformation of inputs and outputs to amplify the initial disturbance to lead to improved outcomes. An example of that can be a retention effort for Latino students. That initial disturbance, the program that was created to support retention, has led to improved outcomes and the feedback is provided to ensure that those disturbances be retention efforts are kept going. Interdependence in relationships is also another part of general systems theory. After World War II, there was a concern about the compartmentalization of science. A connection between scientific disciplines with organizational management emerged, which was general systems theory. The idea created by Bert Lenafi was that there was a relationship between all organization, similar to how there were relationships within nature that would produce an independent relationship of parts to reach a common goal. In order for that to happen within higher education and organizations, there must be communication plans in place to ensure exchange of relevant information. Also, the various departments' programs are also considered subsystems, which are interrelated parts that turn inputs into outputs, and everything together creates the outputs for the organization. Dynamic equilibrium exists when system components are in a state of change, but at least one variable stays within a specified range. Homeostasis is a condition of dynamic equilibrium between at least two system variables. So these can be seen within higher education as a retention rate and making sure that that one variable stays within a certain range. And all the pieces, so the academic departments, student affairs departments, maintenance departments are working towards keeping that one variable within that specified range. Homeostasis can be seen as retention and graduation rates. So those are two variables that are being kept between a specific range. There are criticisms with systems theories. One of them is the interdependence of personnel that within the system to work truly openly Personnel need to be willing to work with one another across disciplines. Also, the effect of environment on structure and function. Open systems are influenced by their internal and external environments. So there may be the best plan laid out. However, if there are external factors that are creating what is going on as the final output that may be due to the inability 
of the system to actually do what it's planned to do, but more a reaction of what the environment is pushing it to do. The idea of nature versus nurture within an organization. Here are two examples of a theory application within higher education. So there is the instructor versus learning paradigm where knowledge exists versus being created. Instruction paradigm believes that learning is cumulative and the learning paradigm believes that learning is linear. And there is a set production schedule that learning happens within a dedicated time frame in the classroom and that's it. An example of this can be service learning where you are taking students out into an environment which may be a service organization to do work that is interrelated to the class session. Interdisciplinary learning is also another example in which holistic learning taking multiple disciplines and combining them together for increased critical thinking and thought. It helps to reduce department silos because all of the subsystems, the departments, are working together towards the common goal of education. It also helps extend resources. You have the opportunity to have funding from two different departments come together to be able to support a class or program. An example of this would be an interdisciplinary math and English class, which is team taught by a mathematician and an English faculty. The benefit to the student would be having a greater opportunity of understanding math problems from an English focus, as well as having the content expertise of a mathematician to be able to solve the problems. Here is the discussion board question that is posted on Canvas. As a university, departments are interrelated with the goal of producing college-educated individuals. How can community college leaders create an environment of shared governance using an open systems framework? Is it possible for subsystems to work interrelatedly towards a similar goal in higher education? And with that, I thank you for listening to this presentation. Here are the references that I used as a part of my paper and this presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me via our CCL Cohort 25 Facebook page or email at alvaradok at oregonstate.edu.